Good afternoon. My name is Ben Schmidt. I am a staff scientist at Physical Electronics. In today's talk, we'll be discussing Auger electron spectroscopy of fresh and aged alumina-supported silver catalysts. The samples for this study were provided by Scientific Design Company, Incorporated. As a quick introduction to Auger electron spectroscopy, we have a schematic shown here on the slide showing how we irradiate a sample with a primary electron beam. The excitation volume of that electron beam will penetrate into the sample on the order of a few microns. Within that excitation volume, there will be many interactions taking place, such as the emission of X-rays, secondary electrons, and OJ electrons. The characteristic X-rays, typically used for things like EDS analysis, can be emitted from deep in the sample. However, OJ electrons have an information depth of just a few nanometers, making it a very good technique for surface sensitive analysis. Further in the introduction to Auger electron spectroscopy, or AES, AES is a well-suited technique for the surface characterization of small features. As shown on the previous slide, it has an inherent analysis depth of just a few nanometers, making it very surface sensitive. It can also provide lateral resolution of particles as small as about 20 nanometers in diameter. AES is routinely used by scientists in applications involving semiconductors, microelectronics, metallurgy, corrosion, and thin film coatings for the purposes of characterizing small area defects, particle contaminants, or thin layers. One of the challenges of AES is analyzing insulating samples due to the uncompensated charge buildup that occurs during the electron beam bombardment. However, with careful sample preparation and appropriate operating conditions, we can collect excellent data from things like catalysts on insulating supports, and these are typically things like metal oxides. And so the purpose of this study was to answer the question, what happens to a catalyst during the aging process, and how that may affect the performance of the catalyst? In this investigation, we performed Auger elemental mapping and small area spectroscopy to study the changes that occur between a fresh and aged cesium-promoted alumina-supported silver catalyst sample. This data was acquired on a physical electronics model 710 scanning Auger nanoprobe. The primary electron beam was operated at an accelerating voltage of 20 kilovolts and a target current of 10 nanoamps. To help mitigate the charging issues, the catalyst powder samples were mounted by pressing them onto a conductive foil. Now we will talk about some of the methods that are used to handle charge compensation for insulating samples in Auger analysis. A few of the examples are shown here using low beam voltage techniques. One way to reduce the negative charge buildup is to use a lower primary electron beam on the order of three to five kilovolts. Another thing that can be done is to tilt the sample to grazing angles to deflect the forward scattering electrons away from the analyzer. We can also use a low energy argon ion flood to help neutralize the negative surface charge. Another technique uses high electron beam voltages. In this case, if we have a thin insulating layer on top of a conductive substrate, we can use a high electron beam energy to punch through the insulator to form a conductive path through the conductor. The reason this works is that the depth of interaction volume is related to the electron beam energy. The depth of the interaction volume can be calculated from the Kanaya-Okayama range equation. For example, for a 5 kV electron beam on copper, the beam penetrates approximately 150 nanometers into the sample. For a 20 kV beam on the same copper, it will penetrate approximately 1400 nanometers into the sample. This is the method that we will use in this study of the alumina-supported catalysts. Furthermore, based on the geometry of the Phi 710 instrument, if we do need to tilt the sample, we will see constant sensitivity at multiple tilt angles, which is a benefit of the cylindrical mirror analyzer configuration of the 710. Compared to a spherical capacitor analyzer 
that will have a sensitivity dependent on the tilt angle. For this study, we compared fresh and aged supported silver catalysts. To start with, we collected an SEM at a field of view of 10 microns. On the left side, we see the fresh catalyst. On the right side, we can see the aged catalyst. Below that, we have silver, aluminum, and cesium maps that we have collected within the same field of view. From a quick glance looking at the silver map, we can see that in the fresh catalyst, silver is dispersed throughout the catalyst region and has particle sizes on the order of 0.05 to 0.1 micron in size. However, in the aged catalyst, the silver is agglomerated into particles on the order of about one micron in size. So we can see there is a dramatic change in the localization of silver in the aged catalyst. We can also look at the aluminum map and see that in the fresh and aged catalyst, the particles remain of roughly the same size and shape before and after aging. Looking at the cesium map, we also see that cesium remains dispersed across the catalyst. We also see that there is a slightly increased overall surface concentration of cesium after aging. Now to explore the nanoscale detail of the age catalyst, we have focused on a region of high cesium concentration in the cesium map. We have taken a Auger spectrum from a 20 micron field of view, and it shows that alumina is present as well as small amounts of the silver and cesium catalyst materials. This survey was collected across the entire 20 micron field of view, and the aluminum Atomic concentration is approximately 49%, oxygen 44.6, and silver and cesium at approximately 3 atomic percent each. And again, starting with the SEM at a 20 micron field of view, we can collect an aluminum map, a silver map, and a cesium map. The aluminum, again, is dispersed across the region. Silver, we can also see are agglomerated into particles approximately one micron in size. And lastly, for the cesium map, we do see a couple hot spots toward the bottom right of the image and toward the left side of the image as well. We can continue an analysis of this bottom hot spot of cesium by performing a localized survey spectrum of that particular particle region. We do see an increased cesium concentration of approximately 13%. We also see indication of rhenium in this location. With this information in mind, we can perform a rhenium map across the entire field of view. And we do see that rhenium is also located in the hotspot of cesium. To get some very fine detail of the rhenium hotspot region, we have collected a 2 micron field of view SEM and we can perform both a cesium map and rhenium. We are able to see a cesium feature approximately 200 nanometers across. A rhenium map shows that rhenium is also co-located in the area with high concentration of cesium. So as a summary, we are able to observe the distribution of catalyst constituents on an insulating catalyst support material such as alumina. We observe changes in morphology of the catalyst constituents between the fresh and the aged catalyst. And we're able to demonstrate the ability to locate and characterize submicron features with the use of Auger imaging and spectroscopy. This work was performed on the Phi 710 scanning Auger nanoprobe. Multiple technique options include energy dispersive spectroscopy, backscatter electron detection, electron backscatter diffraction, and a focused ion beam. Thank you for your attention.